Hey boys and girls, this is our last week in the hermeneutic sermon series and we have gained so much knowledge over the last nine weeks. Let's recap just a little bit. We learned how to use our Bibles and get the most out of every scripture. We learned how to dig deeper by asking, what does the scripture say? What does the scripture mean? How does this scripture connect with the rest of the Bible? And how does this impact me? We've discussed the importance of knowing and understanding the scriptures and why it is necessary to apply them to our life. We also discussed how everyone responds to the gospel in various ways and how telling stories can help us share the good news with others. It is our hope that this sermon series and the activities have opened your eyes to the wonderful things in God's word. The information you have received and practiced are the tools needed to not only deepen your relationship with God, but also equip you to build into and share the gospel of Jesus with others. The gospel of Jesus is clear and simple. It does not matter how smart you are, how athletic you are, how rich or poor you are, how good or bad you are. God's love is a gift and it is freely given to us. All we have to do is reach out and take it. Remember, we are called to share the gospel of Jesus with everyone and then trust that God is mighty to save. You have been equipped with the knowledge and the resources needed to go out and tell others the good news. So as we close this sermon series, I challenge you to use what you learn. Hear the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then respond, here I am. Send me, Lord, send me. I know I speak on behalf of all the other leaders when I say it has been our joy and our pleasure to walk through this with you, learn and teach you. Um, and I hope that you have enjoyed this sermon series and the activities that have gone with it. So let's get to the activities that will close us out. So our last weekly challenge is called Start Spreading the News. So in this weekly challenge, we are asking you to pray for a friend or a family member and pray specifically for their salvation. Also pray and ask for help in sharing the good news with others. We want you to sit down and brainstorm ideas or people that you want to pray about. Then make a prayer wall and pray specifically for those things throughout that week or throughout this week. So the next step in that weekly challenge is just start spreading the good news. Invite someone to a virtual church. Share your poster as a conversation starter. Share something you learned in this series with a friend. Whatever you can come up with, just start spreading that good news. Now, for your weekly challenge post, we want you to take the prayer wall that you have made or the prayer sheet or the journal, whatever it is, wherever you wrote down your prayers, we want you to take a picture of those prayers and we want you to post it to the Redemption Parents Facebook page because we want to pray along with you as you are praying through those things this week. So our scripture reading for this week is Acts 17, 16 through 34. In our storybook reading, you know, we love Jesus and we always want to learn more and more about him. So make sure that you stay tuned for this week's storybook reading being read by Whitney Roberts. And so I know you guys have all been waiting to hear what the 66 books was all about. So here it is. We suggested that you start practicing and memorizing those 66 books of the Bible. So what we want you to do is we want you to choose a creative way, something that is unique to you, that shows off your personality. We want you to record yourself in that way, reciting the 66 books of the Bible from memory. Okay? Post that to the Facebook Redemption Parents page. And then once we get all those videos posted, we're going to take them and we're going to put them together into one big like compilation video so we can show off our hard work and kind of close out this sermon series with the 66 books of the Bible memorization. So you guys have got some work to do this week. We cannot wait to see the videos that you're going to post. And last but not least, make sure that you remember to do those sermon note journals um, that we have been completing each week when Pastor Josh does his sermon. 
So we'll see you soon, guys. This week's story is called The Friend of Little Children, and it's found on page 256 of the Jesus Storybook Bible. This story comes from the book of Matthew, chapters 18 and 19, the book of Mark, chapter 10, and the book of Luke, chapter 18. Jesus' friends were arguing, who was the most important helper in God's kingdom? They wanted to know. I am, James said. No, you're not, said Peter. I am. Nonsense, Matthew said. I'm the cleverest. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, no, am too. This silliness went on and on like that for some time. You see, Jesus' friends had started thinking they had to do something to make themselves special to Jesus. That if they were the cleverest or the nicest or something, Jesus would like them best. But they had forgotten something. Something God had been teaching his people all through the years. That no matter how clever you are or how good you are, or how rich you are, or how nice you are, or how important you are, none of it makes any difference because God's love is a gift. And as anyone will tell you, the whole thing about a gift is it's free. All you have to do is reach out your hands and take it. So while Jesus' friends were arguing, some people who knew all about getting gifts in fact, you might say they were gift experts, had come to see Jesus. Who were they? They were little children. Jesus' helpers tried to send them away. Jesus doesn't have time for you, they said. He's too tired. But they were wrong. Jesus always had time for children. Don't ever send them away, Jesus said. Bring the little ones to me. Now, if you had been there, what do you think? Would you have had to line up quietly to see Jesus? Do you think Jesus would have asked you how good you'd been before he'd give you a hug? Would you have had to be on your best behavior and get dressed up and not speak until you're spoken to? Or, would you have done just what these children did? Run straight up to Jesus and let him pick you up in his arms and swing you and kiss you and hug you and then sit you on his lap and listen to your stories and your chats. You see, children loved Jesus and they knew they didn't need to do anything special for Jesus to love them. All they needed to do was to run into his arms and so that's just what they did. Well, after all the laughing and games, Jesus turned to his helpers and said, no matter how big you grow, never grow up so much that you lose your child's heart, full of trust in God. Be like these children. They are the most important in my kingdom.